Uh, Dr. Alley, with all due respect, you didn't answer the chairman's question. You know, he met, uh, the question was a very good question. There have been these back and forth between uh, on glaciers and the melting that we've seen over and over again. Uh, why did it happen then if these same factors that you're blaming it on didn't exist then? Um, I can give you as much or as little answer as that you would like. Um, give me 15 seconds. Please. Okay, g give me 30 if I may. Okay, um, the ahead. ice ages are caused by features of Earth's orbit. Your brightness is the sun. This is the Earth. I, this is the equator. Here is the North Pole. Yes. If the North Pole stood straight up, you could I, never give me a sunburn on my bald spot. But in I, fact, as you know, it is tipped over a little bit. And it nods a little more and a little less over 41,000 years. Now, when it nods more, right. my bald spot ice melts and the right. um, equator is a little more shaded and now the ice grows and now the ice melts, but it takes 41,000 years for this change to happen. We know what that's doing right now and it's not fast no, enough no, to explain to what say, we're seeing. Tell me all of the other uh, melts and backs and forth took all those thousands of years. There, there, wasn't, there wasn't a situation where on Mount Kilimanjaro you had it Ten years you had a, 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 a this much ice, and then the next year you didn't, and vice versa. Kilimanjaro, uh, the records are fairly short. It would be not the best one to lean on, unfortunately. Well, you know what what you do with glaciers, and I hoped I had made that point is that one glacier can do interesting things. The world's glaciers tend to listen to the climate, and so you need right. to take a large data set of glaciers to know what's going on. The whole point what is, you the whole then point do is find that is that... We, now, we all know that these things happen. The major question of this whole debate today, and I'm very, again, very grateful to the chairman for uh, bringing this and having an honest uh, exchange of ideas, is what role mankind is playing, and thus if mankind is playing a minor role, how does that then justify some of the what we consider to be draconian solutions in controlling human behavior that has been offered to us by people who are espousing this particular theory? Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Sander, I, uh, let, let me ask you this. You said, I think it was you who said, uh, the sun, or some people are trying to say the sun explains everything. No, a lot of people are trying to say the sun explains a lot. Maybe you could explain to me why We've noticed that there are similar trends of these meltings uh, of, of the polar ice cap that are going on on Mars. If it is not the sun that is, that is a major factor and human, human activity, why is that? Um, um, if, I, if I may, sir, sure, go right. um, Mars actually is, is linked a lot to the orbit as well. It also has a, some dust storm issues to deal with. Well, of course um, it and does, so, but, but if we have so the same Mars, thing going on at the same time, yeah. uh, and you're blaming human activity for what's going on in Earth, but you see it at the same time on Mars, why do you automatically assume, well, that must be human activity? If, if sir, I wanted to get a measure of how bright the sun was and whether it was getting brighter or dimmer, looking at an ice cap on Mars, which is changing, its orbit has features which, right. which change the sunshine, and it has dust storms which change the sunshine. And that's a very, very indirect, imprecise measure when we have very precise satellites you'll, you'll, that you paid for, the, yeah. what the, the, the okay, people paid for with their tax pay money, Dr. which are measuring it and show no increase in the sun's brightness. Okay, yeah, you'll have to uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I am not a, uh, yeah. a PhD. Mars is a bad solar sensor, and the satellites are actually very good okay. solar sensors. Well, but if you have a situation on Mars that you have that situation, is it just when we people talk about solar activity, are we just talking about the brightness? Are we talking about other type of solar activity that has an impact on human, or not human climate, but the climate of this planet and the other planets of the hemisphere? It's a very interesting question that you ask, sir, because at some level we know that we see the sunspot cycle and we see a very weak response in the temperature. So we know that the sunspots are affecting the climate, and it actually looks like they're affecting it just a tiny bit more than you'd expect well, from the change know, in the well, brightness. We do so there that, is a yeah. little possibility of a, of a fine-tuning knob on the sun, which is not just the brightness, it's other factors. But we, but, do know, but we do know there's been these changes, because we do know that there was a, uh, a medieval warming period, even though we can see that there's been 
attempts uh, over the research history of this research into global warming of trying to basically negate the changes that took place between the, the medieval period and the current period of time. But was the temperature uh, higher on the earth during the medieval period? Is there any evidence that the temperature got to be as high? And if it did, how could we blame that then on the production of CO2? Yeah, we, we have um, fairly high confidence that it's what we call the medieval climate anomaly, um, and it reflects a low in volcanoes blocking the sun and a slight high in the brightness of the sun. And the best reconstructions that we have indicate that it is not as warm as what we're, not what we're having but now, but with but with be. uncertainties that if you sort of go to the far fringe, it just might be about where you are. Now, mm -hmm. this is a very interesting thing you bring up because nature, you know, when the snow melts and the glaciers melt and then they reflect less sun and they suck up more heat and get us warmer, those positive feedbacks don't care whether we made it warmer or whether the sun made it warmer or other things made it warmer. They just care that it got warmer. So we actually use the size of the medieval as one of many ways to find out how much warming we might well, get from the, CO2. That's the essence of the discussion today. And exactly, sir. It, it comes sir. down to whether or not this has, uh, uh, it's in Mother Nature or the, the nature right. of the universe versus uh, human beings doing something that now they now need to be controlled about. Uh, Dr. Michaels, before my time is up, I should give you a chance to comment on, on that one. Things. Well, I would look beyond the medieval warm period, and I would look at the end of the, um, at what's called the beginning of the post-glacial period for several millennia, where we know, based upon uh, fallen trees, when, it, when a tree falls in the tundra, or in the, in the northern part of the distribution, falls into acid, an acid environment, and it's saved, it's, it's preserved, so we can date the tree with carbon dating and find out when it, when it existed. Uh, we know that the boreal forest, the north woods, extended all the way to the Arctic Ocean in Eurasia and, in fact, onto the Arctic Ocean islands. We know that it has to be about 6 to 7 degrees Celsius, that's like 12 degrees warmer, in July for that forest to exist. That's how much warmer it had to be. And that's now, before humankind had any type of impact on this. And let us note this. But let it, <laughs> yeah, okay. But let, let it's us the orbit. But, but let us note this. The actual statistics, when you start your statistics of how much warmer it's getting now, you're starting, to, you're starting your calculations at the bottom of a 500-year decline in world temperature, which Talking. was the Midi Ice Age. Is that right, Dr. Michaels or Dr. Alley? I'm... Yeah, no, it, it's, it, it is very, very clear. I, a lot of my work is reconstructing the history. Nature has changed climate a lot by itself for reasons that we understand reasonably well and we know are not active in this one. And if we point. were not here, you know, if humans weren't here and we didn't care about anything that lives here, if this were a video game, I'd push the button and see what happens because it'd be really <laughs> exciting. But, but it's not a video game. Well, I, I, about, uh, the reason I brought up the, the Eurasian Arctic is because, it, again, it appears it was quite warmer for millennia up there, and the only way you can get it, get it that warm is to run water into the Arctic Ocean that's very warm, and there's only one gate for the water. It's the strait between Greenland and Europe. So that means that the temperature of at least eastern Greenland had to be quite a bit warmer for a very long time, and the integrated warming is probably greater than what we could produce if we tried to burn as much uh, carbon fuel as we could. And the ice still didn't rapidly fall off of Greenland. Uh, as uh, some people are saying, it's going to fall off in 100 years. Well, it didn't fall off in a couple thousand years. Central Greenland was about one degree warmer, one and a half degree warmer, based on about five lines of evidence that I could summarize for you. And Greenland was smaller during this warm time by something like half a meter of sea level. But 
uh, again, the scenario of the rapid loss of ice simply didn't occur, and that's what's, been, that's what's really driving the policy on this. It's not, a ra it's not the gradual warming that's driving but it. For the record, uh, the, uh, the stenographer here can't record that Dr. Oh, Ailey sorry. is periodically pointing to the top of his head. <laughs> as, uh, uh, and it is actually substantive because his, his argument was illustrated uh, by the point that the angle of the Earth relative to the Sun can change over time with a bit of a wobble in the axis of the Earth. And the, the top of Dr. Alley's head presumably represents the North Pole. I will speculate where the South Pole is. Uh, but uh, uh, the uh, symbolism is apparently that the Earth tips towards the Sun and that may be accounting for some of these prior uh, uh, periods in the absence of anthropogenic CO2. Which, I want to recognize that. 